Silva. He's Spanish Moon. I mean, we talked about him. He's trained by the same trainer in Sir Michael Stout. He's got Zacinto in the mile as well. What about Spanish Moon's chances? We kind of touched on him missing the arc yesterday in yesterday's show. And I think that's a positive. He's coming in as a fresh horse. He might not be good enough, but he's at least a fresh horse. It's a value play for me, Spanish Moon. I respect Conduit enormously, but this horse is a typical a slow burner from the Stout Barn. He's getting better and better. He's here on a light campaign. I agree with the point about the Arc de Triomphe. It is a grueling race. Conduit had a grueling race. Spanish Moon connections deliberately forego. They forewent the chance of a, of a place or a win in the Arc for this. And I think he'll come here cherry ripe this weekend. Midday for trainer Henry Cecil. Yeah, this is a, a, an angle on this is Henry Cecil himself who thinks that there's more to come from midday. She ran very well in the Prix de l'Opera in France last time, but Cecil himself, who is a real instinct trainer, insists that he left her just a little bit short. There could be more to come from midday. The question is, does she have that real rapid fire, fast twitch acceleration that you really need for a race like this? Are temperatures at all a concern? Because that was always the talk when they had the Breeders' Cup say at Gulfstream Park in South Florida, but yet Europeans have done very well on some pretty hot days here in California. I, people have real different opinions on this, don't they, Todd? Some people think, well, it cannot be easy to go from cold November temperatures in England, darkness nearly all day, to blazing sunshine in California. But the evidence doesn't back it up. And I think if we go on the evidence, then we have Islington in boiling hot weather here. We have high chaparral dead heating in the turf. Lash I I can tell you, Graham, just as, as far as facts go, 19 turf races have been run in Breeders' Cup history here. The Europeans have won 10 of those. Mm. Seven miles have been run, they've won five of those. So I think all contraindications to what people think. I don't think it's tough for the Europeans to come here. The I, stats prove it. I know I feel better when I yeah. come out here. <laughs> By November. the way, Todd, they've only got two classic victories. They came right here, Arkong and Ravens Pass. And some would say there might be a third on its way. Frank, let's go back to Radiohead. Graham is tempering his enthusiasm, despite, obviously, a horse that's overcome trouble, showed acceleration. Why do you remain enthusiastic? Well, because of Brian Meehan. Because Brian Meehan, we, we originally bought this horse to run in the Breeders' Cup uh, turf, juvenile turf. And so he's got to go in the juvenile now, which is, he had to be supplemented. So it was twice the supplemental fee, and he's going on the dirt. And Mike Ivoron was like, no, nah, it doesn't make any sense. And I said, well, just talk to Brian Meehan. And Brian Meehan convinced him that Radiohead was never better. That he said he's become a professional during the year. He used to pull in his races. Now he's, he's relaxed in his races, and he thinks that this horse will run an absolute bang-up race. He's not afraid of looking at lucky one bit. Frank, did, did you say we purchased this horse for this race? You well, said we? Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Disclosure. Full yeah, disclosure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> put that, yeah, yeah. put that out there. But I, I can see what you would like uh, with what we saw in the backtracks there, especially in the Norfolk. Graham Cunningham, thank you once again. Outstanding job. Graham Cunningham joining us here, our special Betfair correspondent. He will be with us throughout the week. And uh, while we have looked at the Europeans coming onto the track, we also have our backstretch buzz coming up. Juvenile Phillies right now. And we'll come back with more here on the works. The calendar tomorrow, we look at the sprint and the ladies classic. Could Zenyatta still possibly end up there? There's buzz in the air. And you're going to love Backstretch Buzz today. Do not miss it. The Works returns right after this. If you're not a TVG account holder, what are you waiting for? We're upon the best couple of days in all of thoroughbred racing here in North America. To make a wager, become a TVG account holder, and you can be in on all the action that the Breeders' Cup World Championships will bring you Friday, November 6th, and Saturday, November 7th. And if you sign up now, bet 50, get 50. Find out more at TVG.com. can't believe we're winding down the works. There's only a couple of shows remaining. Backstretch Buzz has always been my favorite segment, but I still haven't heard anything earth-shattering that you guys have brought, so let's see if we can do that today. Tom Amos, you're first up. What are you hearing? What's the buzz? Well, my backstretch buzz involves something that Graham touched on, and it's a horse midday that ran last in the opera in France, the grade one opera. In that particular race, she had two months between races, so coming in that race, 60 days, and she made the lead in the last 16 miles. She got tired in the race. The quotes from her trainer, Henry Cecil, who's been around a long time and an excellent trainer, a Hall of Fame trainer, says simply, she was heaving after the race, and she really needed that race. So coming into the Philly and Mare turf, Look for a major improvement from midday and also a chance to upset this field. 
Thanks, Graham Amos. Let's yeah. go to Frank Lyons. Well, trainer John Goslin, who won two races on last year's card, he has Dare Me. She's entered in the Breeders' uh, Cup turf. But John Goslin, we hear, is not committed to run in the Breeders' Cup turf. He has also got her in the Philly and Mare turf and may very well opt for that uh, race instead of the turf. Uh-oh, this is becoming the backstretch Z. Simon, can you save us? Make it the backstretch buzz again. Yeah, well, sit tight and wake up because listening to this, it's going to take a little while. But I posed the $6 million question to trainer John Sheriffs this morning that everybody wants to know. Where is Zenyatta running? He politely declined to answer that question and said, you'll know at entry time. But he did give me the schedule for her pre-race routine or pre-week routine leading up to her big race. This is according to trainer John Sheriffs in my phone conversation with him this morning. This is how it went. He said, Simon, on Monday, she's going to gallop at Hollywood Park. And then in the afternoon, she's going to walk for maybe uh, an hour th from 3 to 4 p.m. On Tuesday morning, she's going to gallop on the training track at Hollywood Park and do the same routine in the afternoon, a one-hour walk. On Wednesday, he said she'll gallop at Hollywood Park. 10 a.m., get on a van to Santa Anita. She's got to be here by 12 noon. So she arrives here at 11.45 a.m. So he thought the schedule out pretty good here. Yeah, very, very detailed schedule. There's no question about it because he doesn't want to be late. This is all according to trainer John Sheriffs. He said she will walk around the barn area here in the afternoon. Then on Thursday, just a D-Day, a few hours away, whichever race it might be, he said she will go to the main track. She'll walk through the paddock on the way to training, kind of a schooling session. In the afternoon, she will school in between races. Okay, no, wait, Friday's Ladies' Day, Saturday the other championship day, so what's she doing on Friday? Well, I thought the schedule would end here, right? Because oh, he's not wait, gonna disclose. He had more. He had more. He said Friday, she could school in the paddock in the after, uh, in the what? Af in the Wait a second. Yeah. If she's schooling, that means she's not running Friday. Well, that's what I think. You make your own assessment. So he said to me she could school in the paddock on Friday afternoon, but it probably won't happen because there's going to be too much activity with Breeders' Cup. You know what I get from this? I wouldn't want to be the hot walker that has to be with her and walk her for an hour in the afternoon <laughs> that's and the, walk her in the morning. Well, there's the buzz right there. From this conclusion, you take whatever you may, she's going to run in the Classic. That's just reading between the lines. How quickly did that phone conversation end when he was on to your game? He said, thanks a lot. <laughs> so, you draw your own conclusion, but that's the schedule according to a conversation with John Sheriffs that Simon Bray had. That was good buzz. Thanks. That's our best 15 the last minutes second conversation of the show. He with Did guys. he get the buzz? He won the buzz today? I, I mean, come on. That, there's no better buzz than that. That's the question everybody want, wants answered anyway. Where is Zenyatta going? I mean, we'll have definition tomorrow, but I think we just heard where she's going to end up. Either that or it's a great fooling job. <laughs> All right, let's go uh, back to some works that we have shown you throughout the week. Summer Bird gets a lot of attention because he is going to be one of the favorites, one of America's best hopes in the Classic. This is a look back to Saturday. Yeah, this was. Remember, he'd worked the week prior with Kent DeZormo, and now he comes back with uh, exercise rider Leo Tempera board. Big high. He's got a lot of high knee carriage here, high knee action, and you can see why this horse really wants a distance of ground as he moves here through the stretch. I think it's a good example of how when you're working a horse, what a trainer's out to accomplish. And in this particular case, Tim Ice simply said, look, let's get him around there, but the last little portion of that work, let's let him finish on up. You watch Summer Bird as he comes through the lane, and that's exactly what he does. And Tom, you took a little issue with those who felt that, you know, other observers, that it wasn't a great move. Well, I mean, the, the, the big move was the week before when he worked in the afternoon at, at here at Santa Anita between races. So why do you need to keep putting the pedal to the metal? You don't have to. I'm not, I wouldn't be here to satisfy the media if I was Tim Ice, and obviously by this work, he's going to stick with his plan. You know something? Tom, you are part of the media. This horse has retained great condition. That's the main thing that I, I look at. He looks like he is uh, he's carrying all the condition he wants, and he does it pretty nicely. This horse is in great shape. That was on Saturday, five furlongs, 59-2 and two for the class on Saturday for the classic on Friday the ladies classic careless jewel is out she's quick in her races she looks quick in her work this is the only work you're gonna see you want to pay attention she is not gonna work from October 27th until the day she runs in the Breeders Cup ladies classic and I'll tell you why in my opinion for a couple of reasons she's a very aggressive filly you can see there she's pulling on a rider like she does in her races I think she gets a lot out of her races she gets a lot out of her works and when she comes down the stretch you'll see she's not that big of a filly so when she's putting this much energy into her work Workouts. She's not that big. You don't really want to come back four or five days in front of the big race and empty her out. If you do that, you could actually take the speed out of her. You could make her change her game, and she won't be going with her best foot forward. That's not what you want. When you look at her here, Careless Jewel, and we recall this work from the last show we did with her, it's a nice work.